Spreadsheets play a very important role in education. Um, spreadsheets also play an extremely important role in commerce and business. In fact, spreadsheets were uh, the first major application that was developed for uh, microcomputers uh, a number of years ago. And so uh, it's important for teachers to be really conversant with spreadsheets, uh, not only so they meet the obligations of the standards, but more importantly so they can really take care of tasks that they need to do, need to do for instructional purposes or planning purposes. Um, <clears throat> the spreadsheet is basically a number cruncher. It's a way of of uh, automating calculations and automating calculations that are dependent upon other calculations or dependent upon other input values. So um, a calculator, a handheld calculator, is really a thing of the past uh, for most educational applications because you can do things much simpler um, and uh, with uh, with a memory trace with a uh, um, with a spreadsheet. So in the spreadsheet in front of us here you can see this is a sample budget for a couple, we'll call them Tom and Joyce. <clears throat> And their January income um, for Tom is 1,975. You can see that value right up here. Joyce's income is exactly the same, 1,975. And the spreadsheet now is designed here to calculate what their total income for January is. And so if you go down the column of January and over for total income, you'll find it's 3,950. But that number wasn't input by the user. That was, that was actually calculated. You can see that up here in the formula bar, if I highlight this, you can see that the sum of C6 to C7 um, is what's going to be placed <coughs> in the cell uh, C9. And uh, indeed, that calculation C6 to C7 um, gives me $3,950, which we're seeing right there. Now, if we looked over at their total income after three months, we can see this value right here, and not surprisingly, it's given us the, the sum of the range of values, in other words, everything inclusive between F6 um, and F7. So F6 is their, this value right here, which is basically the sum of their uh, income from January, February, and March. This value here is Joyce's uh, income summed between January, February, and March. And so if we total those two, we're going to get this one right here. So if you look at the spreadsheet, uh, all of these values on the, on the bottom here, as well as these three values on the side, are all determined by the values that are placed in the cells up here. So for example, let's say that Tom got a raise in January, and we put the value there, 2,000, in there. As soon as I hit the Enter key, you're going to start to see the total income for January change, as well as their total three-month income changing, and ultimately their total income, uh, combined income. Now, when I press enter, you can see that. So indeed, those values changed. You may also notice that, that the February income for Tom and the March income for Tom also changed. And the reason for that um, is that if we were to look at those cells, I was to look at the February income right here by clicking, we can see that it's simply taking the value of C6, in other words, the value of Tom's income in January, and simply putting that in. Uh, similarly, if we look at um, <coughs> Tom's March income, we click right here, that that's based upon whatever D6 is. So if um, uh, by, by putting that, that formula there, in other words, equals plus, D6. The plus simply means take the positive value, whatever is in um, cell D6, and put that in the current cell. And you can see exactly that's what's happened here as we sum across here, and we ultimately get our value over here of uh, 6,000, which would be Tom's cumulative income for the months of January, February, and March. So a spreadsheet is a way of doing calculations. It's a way of of automating rather uh, mundane tasks uh, of arithmetic or algebra and um, <clears throat> or actually even higher level math and so forth if you so cho choose to use it as such. So <clears throat> looking at this spreadsheet we want to look at a, a couple of the different features about how spreadsheets uh, work, how they're, how they're designed. So <clears throat> up at the top you'll see um, 
a kind of your standard uh, menu up here. These things can all be arranged by <coughs> um, displayed or not displayed by changing the view. We're currently looking at a normal view. A page layout would simply break this into uh, pages. You can see this split over here. It's simply one column um, moved on to the next page. This is the way it's going to look if you're going to print it out. That's not terribly helpful in terms of um, actually doing on-screen calculations, but it is helpful to see how things are going to appear when you print them out. So we're going to change that back to normal. <clears throat> now, in terms of the view, we also have a ribbon. Okay, well, if I turn the ribbon off, you can see that everything that was right in this zone here, which I'll now turn back on, was part of the ribbon. And so the ribbon is basically formatting palettes um, that include uh, things uh, such as, you know, um, how to format the columns, rows, etc. And simply are tools that you can see, uh, tools, I'm sorry, that you can use. Now we could also um, turn on here the formula bar. The formula bar um, is where you actually see the calculation that is behind the cell. Now I think it's actually best to, to always keep the formula bar on because with this on, you can see how a cell is actually uh, calculated. So for example, if we want to look at the percent income um, for the mortgage in um, uh, over three months, I can simply click on this and it says 27%, but that's really based upon um, the, the division of F14 F14 being the mortgage sum for the three months divided by F9, F9 simply being the total income, and so we're just getting a percent there. Now when you're projecting things in the classroom, it's helpful to be able to also change the perspective. A simple way to do this is go up here and say change the percent here. Okay, right now I'm enlarging this, which will make it easier when you're projecting something in the classroom. Always be cognizant of uh, how your students are viewing things and make things as easy as possible for them to view. Now, um, when we uh, look back up at the ribbon, we may notice there is some redundancy. We can see here that these uh, values or, or these uh, operations here in terms of aligning text and so forth tend to be repeated up here. Um, again, you can collapse the ribbon like that to um, hide different items that you don't want to see, or you can expand it. Now, the screen that I'm saving this on obviously is wide enough to see the full width of this. We can have a lot of blank rows here, but we can't see um, the bottom. Well, with a spreadsheet, you can split it in half. This little uh, icon right over here with the two parallel bars allows me to split the screen. So I can split the screen right here and now I can see in the top uh, the income categories and if I was to drag to the bottom here you can now see the ending cash level. And so you can juxtapose um, different items of interest so you can see the effect that something has on a remote part of the, of the spreadsheet. Now I realize that some of you may be working with different versions of Excel or maybe even with different spreadsheets, um, but all your spreadsheets have essentially similar functionality. Uh, they may vary in, in certain areas, but, but they do have uh, similar capabilities. So um, although the icon that I showed right here for splitting the screen may appear this way here, it may appear slightly different depending upon which version of Excel or which uh, software application you're using to, to do uh, <coughs> uh, spreadsheet calculations. Now, right now we, could, uh, we can talk about formatting of the cells. These cells are just all expressed numerically. If you really wanted to, you could put all these things up here as numeric values as well, simply by selecting those rows and clicking on the accounting number format here. When you see these Hash, uh, you know, hash marks and so forth. It simply indicates that there's not enough space in the current cell to be able to display that. To expand them so that you can see them and, and uh, actually format them correctly, you can click on the column dividers up here and by 
um, double clicking you can enlarge them so that now they're formatted appropriately so you can actually see all the values um, in, in their numeric format. Now you might say well I really don't need the decimal points and so forth and so you can change that as well. Uh, you can see up here that there's values here in terms of increasing the decimal or in, in our case decreasing the decimal we'll de decrease it down there because the added zeros are of no value in this particular spreadsheet. <clears throat> so now we can um, see the our, our information there a little bit clearer, um, see exactly what it is that we're talking about. And uh, now we can start to do some what if type of calculations. Spreadsheets are very good at doing what if type situations. So for example, let's say that uh, um, Joyce lost her job. Okay, so if Joyce lost her job here in January, um, what impact would that have? Now you can see right now that they have, uh, prior to her job loss, their budget shows a positive uh, ending cash value. They've saved $25 here in uh, January. By the time three months are completed, they've saved $75. Well, what happens if she actually loses it? What effect does that have on the budget? So you can put a, a zero here, indicating that her salary just was wiped out. And now notice that their ending cash value after three months, they're $5,850 in the hole. So in this particular activity, what you're asked to do is to make some reasonable adjustments, as reasonable as can be made to their budget, to see is it possible to actually balance the budget. So um, by uh, splitting the screen as I've done right here, and I can just drag this split right here. I can drag this down here, um, and then I'll move this window up here so you can see their ending cash value. So here's their ending cash level here. We need to be able to get this so that uh, the ending cash value is zero, or at least a positive value. Parentheses always implies negative, in other words, uh, less than zero. So you'd have to ask yourselves, you know, how could you adjust this budget? Is it possible to adjust this budget in any other way? And it's best to do this in pairs, in dialogue about what could or couldn't be done. So for example, in terms of a mortgage, well, the mortgage right now is at $1,055. Is it possible to adjust the mortgage? Well, yeah, technically it is. Uh, you might be able to extend the mortgage from like a 15 year to a 30 year. And in the process, um, you know, reduce your monthly payments by increasing your total amount that you're going to spend on the loan itself. Not necessarily a good idea, but in time of dire economic straits like this, maybe it's going to be necessary to do that. Maybe you could drop that down to $700. Um, <clears throat> now, you still, by doing this, um, still have a deficit budget. You're still at $4,785 in the budget. So by adjusting column C, which is the January budget, um, you're going to start to see changes in this, and you want to get this down to zero, but do so reasonably. In other words, can you eliminate you know, life insurance, reduce any of these values? In most of these columns, um, the February and March values are actually based upon the preceding column. So for example, if I click here for life insurance, that um, the life insurance for March $80 is based upon D19, well D19 simply being the <coughs> um, life insurance value in February, which was based upon C19, which was the life insurance value that we actually put in. So some of those values are going to be calculated based upon <coughs> the, just as, assuming the prior value of, of C, but not all of them. So for example, their charitable giving right here is based not upon necessarily the previous column, um, but this one right here is actually, they just programmed this in as a hard wire of 360. And so, depending upon how the spreadsheet is, is set up that uh, <clears throat> um, changing one column may or may not affect the successive columns. So, as you go through this, um, be uh, making reasonable changes and of course documenting what changes you can make to see is it possible to balance the budget. 
This is, of course, a very important type of a task skill for students to be able to master because um, they live in a <laughs> world like us all with limited resources and being able to budget those resources is extremely important. So again, just to, to recap on this is before you proceed, is <clears throat> spreadsheets here, um, as this one here, can, can be on a wide range of topics. But the thing which unites them is their ability to do calculations and um, you look in a particular cell. So for example, if we're looking at a cell here in terms of the food for, um, uh, I should say the, the, the transportation costs for their Ford is 3% of their total budget. That value here can be uh, ascertained where that came from by clicking on the cell, looking up in the formula bar and seeing um, where those are and noticing the colors like this is a blue F25 followed by a green F9 by highlighting the F9 you can see um, exactly where that's coming from because it'll uh, highlight the corresponding cells so F25 to F9 um, you will see that the, the F25 is highlighted in F9 which is just out of the view right now but it can now be seen by scrolling up that this was also highlighted um, and this appears in green because the F9 appears in green. The F25 appears in blue because down here um, it's referring to this cell. So they're also color coding and showing you where the different values come in from. Okay, so uh, spend some time, try to um, run your calculations, see if you can indeed balance the budget in a reasonable fashion.